Eighth grade open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit eight, lesson five, reasoning about square roots. Problem one, A, explain how you know that the square root of 37 is a little more than six. Because six times six is 36 and seven times seven is 42, you know that the square root of 37 is going to be between the square root of 36 and the square root of 49. Since 37 is much closer to 36 than it is to 49, you know that the square root of 36 is going to be just a little bit more than 6. B. Explain how you know that the square root of 95 is a little bit less than 10. We know that 9 times 9 equals 81 and 10 times 10 equals 100. So the square root of 95 will fall between the square root of 81 and 100. And since 95 is much closer to 100 than it is 81, then we know that the square root of 95 is just a little bit less than 10. And finally, C. Explain how you know that the square root of 30 is between 5 and 6. 5 squared is 25, and 6 squared is 36. So the square root of 30 is going to be between 5 and 6. 25 is closer to 30 than 36 is, so the square root of 30 is going to be a little bit closer to 5 than it is to 6. Do something nice. Like this video, say something in the comments, tell a friend about this channel, and hit that thanks button. Problem number 2. Plot each number on the number line. The first number we need to plot is 6. That's easy enough. We can put a point right above the 6 on the number line. The next number is the square root of 83. Well, we know that 9 times 9 is 81. So the square root of 83 is just going to be a little bit greater than 9. So we can plot our point just to the right of the 9 on the number line. The next number is the square root of 40. We know that 6 squared is 36 and 7 squared is 49. So we're going to plot this point between the 6 and the 7, a little bit closer to the 6, because 36 is closer to 40 than 49 is. The next number is the square root of 64. Since 8 times 8, or 8 squared, is 64, we can plot this point right above the 8 on the number line. And finally, 7.5. 7.5 is 7.5, so we can plot this point exactly between 7 and 8 on the number line. Problem number 3. Mark and label the positions of two square root values between 7 and 8 on the number line. 7 times 7 is 49, and 8 times 8 is 64. So a square root value that could fit on this number line has to be between the square root of 49 and the square root of 64. It could be any square root between the square root of 49 and the square root of 64. For example, the square root of 52 and the square root of 60. Those would both work. Problem number four from 8th grade unit 8 lesson 3. Select all the irrational numbers in the list. Remember, irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be represented as a simple fraction. The term irrational means no ratio. And as a decimal, it would be a decimal that never ends and never repeats. Pi is an irrational number because written as a decimal, it never ends and never repeats. And pi cannot be represented as a fraction. Another example of an irrational number is the square root of 2. Written as a decimal, it goes on forever without repeating. The first number is 2 thirds. 2 thirds is a rational number because it's written as a fraction. And written as a decimal, you can see that it repeats. The next number is negative 123 over 45. When written as a decimal, you can see that that number also repeats, so it's a rational number. The next number is the square root of 14. The square root of 14 is an irrational number because it can't be written as a fraction, and when written as a decimal, it goes on forever without repeating. The next number is the square root of 64. The square root of 64 is 8 because 8 times 8 equals 64. 8 can be written as a fraction, 8 over 1, and 8 is a rational number. 
Next is the square root of 9 over 1. That's the same as the square root of 9. Since the square root of 9 is 3, and 3 can be written as a fraction, 3 over 1, 3 is a rational number. Therefore, the square root of 9 over 1 is also a rational number. The next number is negative square root of 99. This number, as a decimal, goes on forever, does not repeat, and it cannot be written as a fraction. So negative square root of 99 is an irrational number. The next number is negative square root of 100. The square root of 100 is 10, because 10 times 10 is 100. So the negative square root of 100 would be negative 10. Negative 10 can be written as a fraction. Since negative 10 is a rational number, then the negative square root of 100 is also a rational number. Problem number five. From eighth grade unit eight, lesson two. Each grid square represents one square unit. What is the exact side length of the shaded square? I'm going to form a triangle so I can use the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. For this triangle, we can use 2 squared plus 3 squared, and that will equal c squared. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 plus 9 equals c squared. Since 4 plus 9 is 13, we know that c squared equals 13. So the side length C must be the square root of 13. So the missing side length in this case is the square root of 13. Problem number six from eighth grade unit seven, lesson 10. For each pair of numbers, which of the two numbers is larger? Estimate how many times larger. A, these are equivalent to 370,000 and 7 million. 7 million is obviously larger than 370,000. I used a calculator and I can tell that 7 million is almost 19 times larger than 370,000. That means that 700 times 10 to the fourth power is almost 19 times larger than 0 0.37 times 10 to the sixth power. B. These are equivalent to 48,700 and 1,500,000. 1,500,000 is obviously larger than 48,700. Using a calculator, I can see how many times larger 1,500,000 is compared to 48,700. It's almost 31 times larger. That means that 15 times 10 to the fifth power is almost 31 times larger than 4.87 times 10 to the fourth power. C, 500,000 and 2.3 times 10 to the eighth power. These are equivalent to 500,000 and 230 million. 230 million is obviously greater than 500,000. Since 500,000 is half the size of 1 million, then 230 million would be 460 times larger than a half a million. 230 million is about 460 times larger than 500,000. That means that 2.3 times 10 to the power of 8 is 460 times greater than 500,000. Problem number 7 from 8th grade unit 6 lesson 4. The scatter plot shows the heights in inches and three-point percentages for different basketball players last season. A. Circle any data that appear to be outliers. I circled one outlier. It was located at 85 inches and then just below the 15% mark. B. Compare any outliers to the values predicted by the model. This point represents a player who had a significantly worse three-point average than the model predicted by about 15%. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video and hitting that thanks button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.